And I wish it wasn't out of line to tell him so The waiter never seems to get my order right Seems like I got to complain almost every night How much longer can I take this abuse? I try to be nice, but what's the use? When I'm the only one that does anything right Sometimes it seems like the world is run by chimpanzees Even though some of them might come But I think I can say with obvious conviction That in this old world Everybody's wrong but me Welcome to Uncommon Sense. My name is Charlotte Laws and today we're going to be discussing President-elect Barack Obama, how women become less bitchy as they get older, and how men are attracted to women in red. We will also talk about how cancer can disappear on its own and the recent tragic situation in which a Walmart employee was trampled and killed by impatient shoppers. But first, I'd like to introduce my esteemed panelists. We have Mr. Charles Parcell, who is my husband and who is an attorney and a mediator and a very smart man. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Charlotte. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Dr. Ian O'Neill, who is also a very smart man, and he's a, a space science writer, a journalist, and has a radio uh, talk show. Thank you, Charlotte. Welcome to the show. And the first topic has to do with our president-elect, Barack Obama. And I'm wondering if maybe he, in some ways, has morphed into John McCain. I feel like we, in a way, have elected John McCain because when he was running, when Obama was running, he was running on a pretty liberal platform. He's saying he wanted to, for example, get rid of the, the Bush tax cuts, which now he's changed his mind. He's not saying we're going to get out of Iraq right away. He's um, got an economic team that's actually... Um, looks like an economic team that John McCain would put together. Many of his uh, cabinet appointees are pretty conservative by Obama standards, one could say. And so what do you think? Do you think that during his campaign that he was kind of running as more of a liberal? Do you think this is going to upset the liberal wing of the Democratic Party and the Daily Kos and the Huffington Post people and all these, these individuals who really expect him to stick to this liberal agenda? <laughs> I mean, I think that John McCain during the campaign was not the real John McCain. So my question is, was Obama not the real Obama either? Is this the real Obama now that we're well, seeing? Or is he just saying he wants to, you know, be a successful president, so he needs to rule, you know, to lead from the middle more than from... So, so you're saying, is the not real Obama... Will the real Obama please stand up? ...morphing into the not real McCain? No, the real I, John McCain. The real not the not real. The not real John McCain is the far right guy who ran during the campaign to satisfy the right side of his My party. My answer is not really. What's yours? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've always been careful about getting involved in political debates, especially in a country that I can't actually vote yet. I mean, this is going to change next time around. But this you think time, they won't give you the vote if you uh, say anything? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's, uh, just, it's just very difficult. Yeah. No, yeah, we're yeah. British. Come on, you know, uh, you know we're polite. We you don't guys are get, too polite. Don't I don't know what to in, say. That the in, British are too in polite in the colonies uh, disputes. But uh, no. Uh, um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I, I've, I've been following um, John McCain's uh, uh, work in the coming up to the election and also Obama's, and they had some very interesting policies. I mean, I'm a space writer, so really that was my main focus. And they had some very interesting policies. Unfortunately, the McCain camp kind of went along with the Bush's flawed vision for space. And I believe it's flawed because simply NASA doesn't get, pay, get enough money to be able to send man to Mars, man to the moon. So what is, what, okay, what is the Bush? I don't even know what Bush's policy is well, for space. There, there's never any coverage on this. Yeah, no, there's very little coverage, and it was very difficult to find information on it. But, but uh, Bush's um, uh, vision for space was to go back to the moon, uh, as we did 50 years or 30 years ago, um, just to go back for political reasons. There wasn't really any, any financial gain from doing so, but we needed to be seen to be doing something. And this is, this is a whole different debate. Seen about in the country or seen internationally? Yeah, seen internationally. Um, 
so his vision for space was to get to the moon first, use that as a stepping stone, then to go to Mars. Basically, we want man on Mars within the next 30 years. Um, problem is, there was no follow through because there was no extra funding to do this. Mm -hmm. So we're, we've come, up, we've come across a real big problem now where the space shuttle is going to get abandoned in 2010 and it's going to be another five years before the Constellation project, which is the next shuttle, which is to go back into space. And there's a five-year gap where there could be a possibility where US is not going to have manned access to space. This was never addressed. It's almost as if they've been making this up as, as they go along. Why have we got these massive plans to go back to Mars in 30 years if five of those years are going to be taken up with no manned and access to space, mm -hmm. letting Russia and China and everybody else, you know, shuttle to and from almost like routine. Um, so the Obama camp kind of presented something very different. And, and he was a lot more uh, relaxed and a lot more um, realistic about NASA's, NASA's aims. And he's saying, well, perhaps we should put back the Constellation project because simply we don't have enough money to provide to right. NASA to, to fulfill these goals. McCain came in saying, we want to keep on, we want to go ahead with pretty much with this the This was during, campaign. during the campaign or since this the campaign? This is during the campaign. Okay, because he had up. a lot of programs that he's now cut back, but Obama, because yeah. of the financial situation the country's in. Sure, and this is the, he's, he's very much um, for robotic missions in space rather than manned missions. Manned missions cost an awful lot more than robotic missions. Right. So so he wants to invest more money in smaller missions into space. And although that, because uh, I'm a big space advocate, I, I want to see man in space. I want to see us go to Mars. I want to be, I want to actually see what it's like to, you know, stand on the moon. You know, I'm, I'm a big advocate. But unfortunately, if the money isn't there, it's almost like a self-destruct switch. Right. If you're going to be plowing all these money into these, into these uh, projects that aren't going to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. and I think Obama's seen that, and he's followed through on his promise to actually make a change. So mm -hmm. I'll be interested to see in the next year just how he does stick with his promises, because he has been accused, as you say, of changing his policies. But he's not taxing the well, wealthy on, now. Excuse me. He's not going Obama to tax Obama campaigned for two years. The economy wholly tanked. It's a tack dog, Charles. Yeah, the, it, right, <laughs> he's the, coming for me. No, the economy, <laughs> the economy has tanked very, very recently. Remember? Well, yes, it's, 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 no, no, it's been no, tanking during no, the campaign, too. No, yeah. In, at the very tail end of the campaign, the economic situation was revealed to be entirely different from how it had, right, how it had, not, how it had appeared a year I earlier. Understand. So naturally, an administration is going gonna, is gonna to tailor its policies to deal with the actual situation. Mm -hmm. As I'm sure you remember, Charlotte, John Maynard Keynes says, remember you heard of John Keynes? He said, when the facts change, I change my mind. What do you do? Right. So. Clearly, there's a pressing situation that needs to be addressed, and I hopefully this administration, uh, the, the incoming administration, will deal with it. As for Iraq, there's already a deal on the table. The American forces are out by the end of 2011, so the situation takes care of itself, hopefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but as for well, I mean, it's just you know his whole you know his whole cabinet and you know putting in Hillary Clinton, which people seem to support. I mean, I think it's like 69, 70 percent of the country is in support of that. It mm -hmm. seems like a, a good decision, but it's you know very different foreign policy than what he was advocating during the debates. That's all I'm saying is that it does seem a bit different. I think he's going to be a good president. I think he's a pragmatist, and I think he will be a good president. I think, we just I think he wait. really wants to be a good president. Mm -hmm. So I'm not attacking him, but I'm just saying there is quite a shift from what he was campaigning on as to what's happening now. And even the Democrats started attacking him today what do you on mean the fact a shift that he, in foreign policy. No, if on no. all of his policies, not just foreign policy. But there's domestic. no shift in foreign policy that I'm aware of. Well, he was talking about pulling immediately out of Iraq at the beginning of the campaign. As time went on, he started kind of waffling on that a bit. But even today, the Democrats are attacking him. Mm -hmm softly attacking him for not coming forth more strongly on help for the auto well, companies. The existing, the current administration has signed an agreement with the Iraqi government. It, 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 it's that, that's it. Right. And it's pretty close to the position that Obama has been taking over the last two years. Quite a lot of consistency there. Um, Okay, I'm going to move to the next topic. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say that women become less bitchy as they get older. Um, I haven't well. found that to be the case. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still young, dear, so <laughs> I don't count, right? Ah, right. <laughs> but they say 40 to 60-year-old uh, women were asked, um, shown a picture of attractive, you know, pictures of attractive women, and they didn't seem to criticize. They don't criticize as much as they get older because there's this competitive drive, I guess, when they're younger to, you know, feel like the other woman's going to take their man or something like that. So women supposedly, you know, become 
you know, more laid back as they get older. It's interesting that you're a woman you use the word bitchy. We don't I'm using the articles word. I don't usually use that kind of language, as you know. I, I, said, I, <laughs> I, I, I do realize that. But that's, that's a word in, 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 very, it's in common use. There's no such word, there's no adjective to describe us odd, oddity, isn't it? Well, I think... What, what word would describe us if we were bitchy? Um, arrogant. Well, we say jerks. <laughs> yeah, we call jerks. men jerks. Idiots. Arrogant. I thought it was, so I was a cop. Arrogant. I used that <laughs> against you just about 30 minutes ago. <laughs> arrogant jerk? <laughs> no, I just said arrogant. I didn't say jerk. Well, I, I, but, don't, you know, I, heard I people, don't agree with I heard them end. debating the word shrill on TV not long ago and saying that shrill is used for only for women and not like Nancy Pelosi or somebody like that, but not used for men. But I actually use it for Sean Hannity and lots of men. I call shrill. I call women shrill and I call men shrill. Shrill so, is a good word. But they say that it's, a, it's just you know, a sexist term. But it depends on what kind of guy you're talking to as well, because there's a lot of guys, this whole metric. I think James Carville is shrill, too, on the left side, the right and the left. <laughs> I think they're shrill characters on both sides of the aisle, frankly. Mm. But um, well, so women, I'm going to show you pictures. And Ob Obama is not shrill. He's a no, bar, a no which, drama which, is, which girl would you want to go out with? <laughs> no, neither. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> These are two pictures of me. Uh, the same, same girl, aren't they? The same girl. <laughs> two pictures of me. I tried to get kind of like, they're both kind of like Polaroid yeah, here, shots. They're, so, but neither one of them is appealing at all, huh? It's no, they both look great. <laughs> one of them is in the red. One of them is wearing red. Ian definitely picks, the red. Yeah. yeah. Ian goes for the red, which I think. I know what we're getting onto. So now. that's yeah. the topic, and the topic is is that apparently men prefer women in red. They're, they think they're more attractive, and they did a study where they took the same woman, exactly the same picture, and they put like a blue frame or a beige frame or a red frame, and the men would say, "Oh yeah, the one in the red frame, that's the attractive one," or they would do a Photoshop thing where they change the color of the skirt from like blue to red, same exact picture, same exact woman, and the men would say, oh yeah, the red one's the one that's attractive. Mm -hmm. Do you find, I mean, I don't know. Well, science has the answer to that, so let's ask Ian. I, I don't <laughs> think that's space physics though, is yeah, he's it? Yeah, <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> But no, What do Martians for, prefer? <laughs> from, a, from a personal perspective, yeah, red every time. And really? if you speak to Deb, my wife, um, she said, I tend to get attracted to red, and I said, oh, my ultimate car would be a cherry red she, car. She wears black a lot, the she does wear, does. Yeah, no, she does, she does wear red every now and again, and uh, red and black are my favorite colors. And, and yeah, I certainly find um, a woman dressed in red, I like the song, um, I would say that, yeah, they're probably more eye-catching. Whether more attractive, I don't know. I don't know whether if I had two photos, I'd say one's more attractive than the other. But certainly if I saw somebody, certainly on um, first impressions, I'd probably go for the, for the girl in the red dress. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it must be, it must have something. It's, it's not only girl, women, of course not. Cardinals wear red. Roman soldiers wore yeah, red. Yeah, there's a history mm. of it. And um, judges wear the red sash. That's true. Yeah, yeah. It goes back in history, but it's, sure. it's, it's related to sex in history. Yeah. And female baboons and chimps, their, their private parts get reddish colored. They think this may be a biological thing with red. And then also, you know, we have like Valentine's Day, which is red. We have the red light district in Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of sex and in red. And lipstick as well. Yeah, so roses, lipstick. Are red. Lipstick. roses are red. Roses are red, violets yeah. are blue. Uh-huh. That's yeah. true. But women don't like to wear red as a woman, I can tell you, because it makes you look fatter. So women don't, really? li in general, women don't like to wear red. Well, what does it matter so if the guy loves it? So. I know. Now I've learned something new <laughs> to change yeah. my wardrobe. <laughs> you heard about the um, story recently about the um, Black Friday sale at Walmart in New York where there were apparently 2,000 people outside the door and they broke down the door to get inside and they trampled this part-time employee who was 34 years old and he was killed by this stampede of, of anxious shoppers who had to get, I have no idea why people get so excited about a sale. I think it's completely psycho, but apparently so they he did. Was, he was, this is, this, more, this is mordantly horrible. Mm -hmm. He was a part-time employee, probably didn't even have a belt. <laughs> Yeah. That's a terrible thing to I, say. I know. So what's the point? The point well, the is point is, is now they want to create laws, like Black Friday laws, where if you're having a big sale, now they have to hire extra security, and they want the stores mm. to be in touch with the police as to how much security is needed. See, it's just a, more know, politicians an incident, putting in more laws. An yeah. incident occurs, it's and more laws. It's yeah. basically what it is. It's like, oh, you know, I want to look like I'm doing something, so I better put some, some new laws in place. Yeah. No, I agree. I think that's definitely what it is. I, do, I just think it's insane. The, uh, the, 
the attitude over here, you know, to make it more exclusive, to make the sale more exclusive, they bring it earlier and earlier and earlier. People are camping outside these shops for I days. Know. Obviously, frustrations are going to build. I would not want to sit outside Walmart for for, for two but days. People do this with tickets to events. They yeah. do this for parades. I, I kind of see if you're for a lots fan. of events, people it, yeah. camp out overnight. I can kind of see if you're a fan of say an artist and the tickets are very scarce, so you want to get to the front of the queue and you probably will camp out. But that's a you know once once in a you know, but a, you don't a have people years. being killed in yeah, those you scenarios. Don't get, you don't get them killed. But I well, think yeah, actually, and the you, of course you do. It, in uh, sporting events, yeah. you know, and yeah. 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 people, you Go know, crazy. this is a, this is entirely hundred percent an issue of crowd control. Mm -hmm. Crowds are very very dangerous. Um, people can routinely get crushed in crowds. Mm -hmm. So this is a situation. You know, I mean, I would have thought the, the law is already pretty clear on this. Walmart. Is going to be is going to go down in the civil. I don't suit. agree. I don't think they should. No, the, in a civil suit. I, I don't. I mean, I don't think it's. If there are two thousand people outside your door and your door is fifteen feet wide, mm. this is inherently dangerous. And the thing is, uh, they broke down the door. Apparently, it wasn't just it's when letting he unlocked them in. It, actually, it? And they, well, he started to unlock it, but apparently they broke the glass and everything and came through the door. Yeah, I mean, there's a certain element. I, I noticed in the UK press there was a lot of criticism towards just. The, the U.S. society as a whole, because it's like, well, who's really that keen on getting like cut exactly. price video that's recorders? That's what's so weird. And that's to me. that's the worrying thing. But then again, it depends on how the media presents it. As as uh, Charles was saying, you know, it's a crowd control issue. You know, it doesn't matter why the people are there. The fact is, they are there, and the store has hyped up their sales to such a point where they've generated that number of crowds. They want those crowds there, so mm -hmm. they have to have crowd control there. And although there's a bit of a worry about, you know, what, why is it so important that people get their cut price uh, sneakers or whatever. <laughs> why, why is that? Why is that so great in society today? Why are people breaking down doors to get? I mean, if there was five bread, off? you know, some kind yeah. of well, sustenance, I, well, and they it, were dying. It, I don't know. Yeah, this is a question: Why? Yeah. But the fact is, it is important to people. Yeah, they find it, it very important. There is a crowd. Yeah, there. It, it, in, yeah. our, in our country, people go to soccer matches and used routinely to slaughter each other. Mm -hmm. Why do they do that? Well, the really? fact is, they do. And, the res and if you're in, if you're the responsible authority. You have to control that. Well, I mm -hmm. think that a store that now is going to be having to have a conversation with author with the police department, I think basically what you're doing is shifting the responsibility over the police department. So if you had another incident like this at Walmart and somebody was killed, if they were able to say, oh, but I talked to the police and the police assured us, da-da-da-da-da, then the lawsuits are going to be against that locality, against that city or that county and not no, against not the Walmart. No, not at all. Because the obviously the police aren't going to accept that responsibility. But go to a place where there's brilliant crowd control. Disneyland, they, go, they, go, they got it down. You wait, you can wait an hour and a half for a ride. It's horrible, but, but the nobody crowd cares is very that well. Much to, to get no, on that the ride. No. <laughs> it, it, the re, the they way they patiently. control it is to have yeah. is to have the small little streets, the little, you know. The people, little roped areas. Yeah, people really. follow that. Yeah. But the problem is, I mean, with like a shopping precinct, they want to make it as wide as possible, and so people on routine on a on a daily basis can easily access the store. They're right. not optimizing it for crowd control then. But there needs to be um, a facility in place where there is crowd controls in place when they have these amazing sales. Yeah, uh, exactly. I, I don't understand the mentality behind these sales anyway, but the fact is, as you say, they do. these crowds did exist. They should have been able to cope with them. They should have been prepared. Mm -hmm. So I think it does fall on um, Walmart's lap. It, it's a problem for them, and they need to sort it out because it's, it's a concern. Well, some studies, Sorry. I'm going to the next topic, some studies um, have shown that cancer actually disappears on its own. So um, melanoma, kidney cancer, breast cancer recently they de determined. And so, it, it, you know, and, and what they did is they, and I, I'm, I'm a little bit suspicious of the way they did it, but they mm -hmm. took two groups of women and they had a group of women who was screened and for cancer and a group that wasn't screened for cancer. And the people that weren't screened ended up having fewer, you know, less cancer. So they, they said that it didn't have anything to do with the testing. They thought that the cancers went away. So that makes you wonder about these alternative health professionals, you know, the people that are alternative medicine people, whether it's a homeopath or whether it's somebody like Jim Jones who says, you know, I will heal you or, you know, whoever it may be. And it makes you wonder if that's why they're healing you, people. When you said, I thought when you said alternative health professionals, that you would put health in quotes as if they're not health professionals. No, I'm not saying that. I'm okay? asking you. No, I, I actually subscribe to certain alternative medicine. I definitely do, some of it. Do you subscribe but to... But I'm not, I'm just asking you this question as the devil's advocate. Do you subscribe to some traditional medicine as well? I do. Good, how much? 
How much of it? Since you subscribe to some alternative Well, modes, it depends on the no condition. Doubt. I mean, obviously, if I had to have surgery, I'd go to a hospital. I wouldn't go to, you know, yeah. at the faith healer down the street. Uh, well, uh, okay, I, I'm just being provocative here. I know you are. That's why <laughs> I'm giving you a provocative to, answer. <laughs> I wanted to cheer you up a bit. <laughs> cheer I, me up. <laughs> well, a actually, all, all studies show that placebos work. Yeah, that's true. Placebos work in yeah, many cases. I, th I think it, the human body does have a, an ability to cure itself in certain circumstances, mm -hmm. but yeah, that shouldn't take away from the, the health professionals. I mean, the health professionals, they're, they're professionals in the field. They know what they're talking about. Um, I don't think you should close, you know, be blinkered to alternative therapies. But then again, you shouldn't, on the basis of that, turn your back to more... Um, more uh, modern methods right. of controlling cancer. I mean, I, but I think mammograms, I mean, I really don't think they're good for you. And they, it's like a thousand I mean, times the radiation of a chest <laughs> x-ray. And yeah, I'm skeptical of them, even though I've had a few. I'm, the radiation, I'm nervous about the radiation. Uh, I'm, I must admit, I've uh, recently had a debate about the whole radiation, the perceived radiation risks. If you tell anybody who's not a professional in the field, um, what do you think of radiation? They say it's dangerous. Yeah. Everything emits radiation. And because an X-ray machine emits slightly higher amounts of radiation does not mean it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, there's a slightly high, if, you, if you're a professional and you're around that and you're having 100 screenings a day, yeah, you may create a larger residue of radiation than, than the next person. Um, generally, uh, to have a screening, I think the health benefits far outweigh any risk to do with the radiation that's being emitted from that. I mean, if you go to your your kitchen and if you put a Gary Gehenter next to your sink and the marble around it, the marble will emit a lot of radiation or really? the, it will go crazy. I mean, it's like we've got granite counters. Granite is a massive uh, radiation emitter. What about but, tile? Uh, Does tile do that? It depends what it's made of. If it's, if it's uh, synthetic, tile. if it's synthetic, anything that comes from the gra ground, uh, if it's a ceramic well, and it's actually been mined, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to have a lot of radiation on it. Uh, well, but we, when we I say a, a lot... a granite bathroom. Is that dangerous? No, it's not. That's the point. It's I not guess dangerous. you're going to have to let oh, me have that. <laughs> no, just because it emits radiation does not mean it's dangerous. It just means you get a, a higher dose. But we're talking about, I mean, the health professionals will, you know, you, they want you to have a lower dose as possible. Um, but, you know, airline pilots, they get hit by radiation yeah, all no, the time. Yeah, I know, flying. But they don't have, there's no statistics that suggest they get ex they get any worse cancer risk than the person living on the ground. I don't think the government would want these kind of statistics to surface, though. I mean, I think that, that mm. houses that are near the high power lines, you have much higher... Um, but that's, that's a different... That's, that's and they don't one, want those it? statistics that's released, I mean, because then nobody would live in those houses. So. Yeah, but that's, that's gases. And I, I think there is a risk and there needs to be um, more, um, more studies done, definitely. It, but we just it, don't know. That's the are thing. we on a different topic now, which is the well, no, conspiracy theory against the government? No, that's not the topic, no, not the topic. For today. But I was going to say that if cancer is disappearing, if it can just go away on its own, then parents who opt out of treatment for their children, you know how sometimes parents say for religious reasons, I don't want to, you know, have my, I don't want that treatment for my child, then they mm. would be able to not be held accountable if something serious happened to the child. I mean, possibly it could lead to that. If you're saying cancers can disappear, oh, yeah. well, it's going to go away on its own. I, th I think, you know, the body... there's studies to support that. The body can fight off cancer, but you shouldn't take that for granted that your body is going to fight off cancer just because there's a few isolated cases. Um, I mean, you, you may have cancer and then your body may cure it without even knowing you had cancer in the first place. We don't know that mm -hmm. until you get screened. Um, you don't know that that person's got cancer in the first place. And to just opt out of a medical regime purely because there have been some cases of the body um, mm -hmm. fighting off cancer, I don't think that's good enough cause to ignore treatments altogether right. because but I think that's irresponsible of the parents. Right. But I think, I think it's fair to say that um, cancers are coming and going all the time, probably far more than we're aware of. As you sure. rightly said, they come and go without you being aware of them because we're talking about you know, events that the immune system is taking care of below our consciousness. We only yeah. tend to notice it when true, there's yeah. a symptom. When it, sure when it gets out of control and when you can actually, mm -hmm. you know, when it's a lump that can be viewed. Well, robots as soldiers is the next topic. And oh. there was an ethicist philosopher who wrote a, wrote a paper recently about how he thinks robots could be much more ethical soldiers and that we should be putting robots on the battlefield, which is kind of an interesting idea. And they did a Didn't study... Did you say ethical or effective? Uh, ethical. Would you want ethical soldiers on the battlefield? <laughs> <laughs> I thought yes, you would I want do. effective soldiers. But I don't soldiers. even want them on the battlefield because, of course, you're killing animals, you're killing 
plants, you know, you're destroying the environment, you're destroying living beings out there. So even if you had robots on both sides fighting each other, that would not be ethical behavior, in my opinion. I'd rather, if you're going to have robots on both sides, you might as well but just play a video Taking game. a walk in the woods is not ethical behavior, in your opinion. Breathing in and out <laughs> is not ethical behavior, in your opinion. <laughs> But they yeah, did a. Um, very extreme on the, they uh, interviewed the, some of the soldiers in Iraq. They did like a study, and and like fifty over fifty percent of them said that they didn't have any like ethical duties towards non-combatants. They said that they, you know, a third of them said that they believed in torture. So you know, they didn't have at least in this study, they didn't have a real positive feeling about their ethical duties as soldiers in Iraq. Well, I went to a local high school to talk to the kids about several months ago. And a significant number of children in that class had had no problem. In fact, the majority of them had no problem with torture. I was amazed. really. I was absolutely mm. blown over by by that when they said, "Oh yeah, torture." Really? Oh, yeah, it was very. very That's shocking surprising. That's right. So as for this, your soldiers on the battlefield. It's it's fair to say that. Well, they non-combatants have always had a very hard time in war if they're anywhere near the action. And today, where it's very hard to tell, in the, uh, the kind of, kind of conflicts that have been going on recently, hard to tell who's a combatant and who isn't when mm -hmm. you're dealing with fire bombs, car bombs, roadside bombs, improvised explosive devices. You, you can, you know, f a few of those, a few weeks of that, and you can get, you, you can, you know, the distinction can get blurred very easily. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we already have things already, you know, like electronic um, mind detectors and various other contraptions that are manned from Nevada, from a command post. And um, so they want, this guy is saying they should be autonomous and that this they would, like self-preservation would not be one of their highest goals. So yeah. therefore, obviously, if someone killed them as a robot, it wouldn't be, that would, they wouldn't be programmed to say, oh, I've got to preserve myself at all costs. And therefore, maybe they could act more ethically. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, respect. the artificial intelligence isn't that far along they, they, that robots can make that kind of ethical decision. And when you take a human out of the loop, um, you kind of come across a Terminator 2 kind of scenario where not that they're going to take over the world, but they're going to pretty much make their own mind up on the spot. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, uh, a lot of robots, and I've seen the designs of these uh, drones that are apparently going to go on the battlefield, uh, they've taken the human out of the loop and they're pretty much allowed to fire at will. Um, I've used a computer. I know I get so many errors a day. Just imagine if that <laughs> thing runs amok and we have to try and shut it down. Of course, then you get the whole laws of robotics, the Isaac Asimov uh, mm -hmm. th thing that, you know, that the, the, the robots well, cannot I, hurt humans. I want to thank so. you both for joining us today and um, thank all of you out there. And I hope we brought some uncommon sense into your life. As you putter through your day, remember, everybody's wrong but me and him and him. <laughs> See you next time. And let's hear it for Yasser. <laughs> Even though some of them might come with college degrees It's getting hard to separate the facts from fiction But I think I can say with obvious conviction That in this old world everybody's wrong but me Everybody's wrong to disagree with me That really chaps my eye I thought it all through so very carefully There's no point even considering the other side